We are here in Cabo San Lucas and there are just humongous fish on the surf here. There's so many awesome fish in here, I'm so ready to catch some. This is a really great spot for rooster fish, jack, all sorts of fish. And there's a lot of fish that I don't even know. So today I'm going to be trying bottom fishing and I'm going to be trying lure fishing. Two proven methods that work, but I'm not sure which is going to work better today. Let's get on. It's been about three years since I fished this spot. But this is like, I, I grew up fishing this spot, so. <laughs> Very excited. Okay, so now the great part is that here's my room, and that's the fishing spot. This is why I love this spot. I really don't have to tie much on. All I have, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I brought all my own personal hay skipper rigs that I already tied up. So I don't have to worry about tying up rigs when I'm here. I just have a bunch of rigs already pre-tied. These are custom made by me. And I chose the specific size float and the specific size hook. Every single thing I chose specifically to target this kind of fish that I like to do. And um, that's a little bit of everything. I know a lot of people who can't tie rigs themselves because either they don't have fingers, they can't see, their vision isn't good enough, or they just simply don't have time. This is a great, great thing to have. I'm going to put this sunrise colored sand flea float on and they're really easy. I have directions on the back how to, how to use it and then all you do is pull it off. It's already tied up. All right, there you go. Just like that. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. Comes out of the package. Now make sure you take this. Make sure you take this and dispose of it correctly. Don't just leave it at your spot. Put it back in your backpack and throw it away when you get home. I don't want to see, I don't want to see this stuff littered around the beaches. Please. 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 Now we're going to tie it onto this two-way swivel at the top. Then we put a sinker at the bottom and we're ready to go fishing right away. This spot has a lot of different kinds of fish. There's a lot of different kinds of fish. You don't know what you're gonna catch. There's some enormous things in here. Um, and, and you'll notice that the waves here, this beach is on another level. Like the waves are enormous. For this kind of beach, it, it just drops straight off. There is no, there's no sandbar out there. It gets very deep. And actually you'll see waves, you'll see, You'll see whales come through here sometimes. That's how deep it is. All right, we're all set up. What kind of bait are we gonna to use today? I think we've got some fresh shrimp, we've got salted shrimp, we've got salted clams, we've got salted squid. I think we're gonna be using um, a little bit of everything. Come on over here. So I, I flew here from Maryland and I can't fly here with fresh bait, but I can fly here with my, my special salted bait. This is the, the all-in-one bait box. I've got, I've got my clams, squid, shrimp. Yeah, I've got all three of those in here. And I flew just fine. I'm gonna put some of these uh, clams on. I went to the grocery store to get some fresh shrimp, but that's not always an option for people. So I'm gonna be cutting up some these clams just like this, cut them in half. And then I'm gonna put some shrimp on. All right, let's go bait up. Shrimp on, get your shrimp on, get your clam on. Yeah, I wanna hit, I wanna, I wanna see what I can catch. Yeah. So now looking at the beach here, there are no white caps out there. This is, there's no bars. It just, it's just a straight drop. So I'm gonna have one far out and one right before, right at the drop off. And you can see how the wave hits the, the sand and kind of stirs up that, 
that, that sand and the water there and it turns into this foamy looking water. That's where sand fleas are getting turned around and fish are hunting in that area. So I'm going to try casting there first. Okay, so now that it's set up and out, we're going to sit and watch it. And you have to make sure to watch it because something big might take it into the ocean. I've had that happen to me before. It took my dad's setup in the water when I was younger. It wasn't a good, it wasn't a good memory because that was a pretty expensive setup. It was like, I think there was a twin tower on it. It was, it was a... What was it? A wave? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I actually have no idea what this is. This looks like... Delicious? <laughs> it, one, it does look delicious. It looks like a croaker. It looks like some kind of croaker. You see that little... I've never seen that before. All right. Have you seen this before? It looks like some kind of drum. We're gonna use this for bait later, yeah. So what kind of fish is that? Comment below. What did you see? A rooster. Rooster fish. Rooster fish? Yeah. Okay, so we switched to this lure. It's called a Ballyhoo. This is a top water plug, meaning it sits on the top of the water and you bring it in really quick. This allows you to fish without getting snagged on rocks on the bottom. This is one of the funnest ways to fish. Because You'll see the fish come up, smack your lure, and then it's a big fight. So, top water is always gonna be the funnest way to catch them for me. What's your favorite lure to use? When you see fish busting on the surface, when you see a lot of bait fish swimming around and predator fish attacking those, this perfectly mimics a wounded bait fish at the top of the water. So this plug is probably two to three ounces itself. And I wouldn't just throw this on any, any rod. I have, and specifically I have a 13 foot Phoenix, it's called a Phoenix Black Diamond Rod. 
and they come out of California. I've been using their surf rods for a couple of years now, and I think they're wonderful. They're a great price point, and the quality of it is pretty darn good. So I keep using these Phoenix rods. 13 foot rated for 15 to 35 pound, and uh, I can throw two to six ounces on this. Don't throw this on a rod that, that is very flimsy and weak because um, your lure is very heavy and you need to whip it out there really far. So I've got an 8,000 sized Stella here with 60 pound braid tied to 50 pound leader, 150 pound tactical clip, and then Ballyhoo where I tied a, um, I tied my own personal red bucktail hair on here to kind of attract fish to come up because when this is on the surface you'll see the red splashing in the water it looks like blood that's my theory so when I cast this I'm gonna try and cast it as far as I can that way and then immediately just start working it back and it's gonna look kind of funny but that's how you work it Watch. Is that a bite? Yeah. That was a big bite. Yeah, Brendan, they were they were really close up. Brendan, I see him. working this lure is kind of like a dog chasing a ball. A fish will chase this like a dog will chase a ball. So if you move it really slow and you keep it in one spot, the dog's not really going to want to chase it. You got to move it fast, get its attention, get it hyped up, bring it fast, and it's going to start chasing it. And game on.
Your 8,000 works very well, Dad. Woo! Oh. <sighs> Holy crap! Hold her up. That was amazing. I look crazy? You look great. Holy cow. That thing was massive. You should you should toss it out, Dad. They're not there now. Oh my god, this thing is freaking enormous. How did it feel? Like one of the biggest fish I've ever hit from the surf. Big jack. Okay. Time to let this beautiful creature go. We're not eating this, so let's let it go. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's That was crazy. They're still around. I think just keep passing it out. Pop it back like this. You'd like to see that popping. My arms are like killing me from that one. That looks really big. When I hit it earlier, it, it, it stuck right away. And I couldn't reel anything. It just felt like it was stuck on something. Then it went start pulling. And I was like, I really gotta put some pressure on this or else it's gonna take me into the rocks and get me all tangled up. So I tightened the drag a little bit and just held on and made sure that I, I really muscled some of it out of it. But then, uh, it didn't get up, all, up until the very end. Yeah, I saw you going to the left to get out of the rock. Yeah, I think mean, starting to swim that way, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So for that big fish, it was actually really tricky to land it. It didn't, might not have looked like it was tricky, but I didn't want to just keep pulling it onto shore. I let I let the big waves take it out. And then when the waves pushed in, that's when I started reeling and tried to land it. But I've lost too many fish right at the surf like that to try it then. I don't like to horse it in at the last second because sometimes it pops a hook at the last second, too much pressure. So you let the, let the waves do the work for you. Let those big waves push the big fish in. And as it pushes it in, reel in that slack. And if it doesn't land all the way and the fish starts sliding back, just let it go back, walk it in, and then let the waves come back and then land it. It's, it's about timing. And, you know, sometimes you may get lucky and you're able to land it, but sometimes you're really unlucky and it snaps off. So this is a way to prevent that, those unlucky times. I want my dad to get one. But they seem to have left. The fish just seemed to have came in for like maybe 10 minutes and gone. And by the, when I was done fighting it, it seemed like they were they're on their way out. We, I'm hoping they'll come back. Maybe this bait line will get a bite. Day one was pretty all right. I'll take it. I got a nice, enormous jack. But honestly, I think that this beach in particular has always been like this. It's about quality over quantity on this beach. And you'll end up catching a nice, huge fish, but that's about it all day. Maybe you'll get one or two of those, but that's about it all morning. I think it was really fun to hit such a huge fish. I wouldn't normally hit such a huge fish on a, on a beach like this. Um, Normally I would catch a lot more fish on that bottom rig, but that bottom rig didn't seem to work as well today. Maybe it's just the day, maybe it was the bait that we're using. Um, we're gonna try it again tomorrow and see what happens. Uh, I'm really happy with that fish that we caught and I got to do it with my dad here and you know, it's just great memories after great memories. Yeah, I'm happy my dad is here, happy Aaron's here, uh, happy we got a fish, and I'm happy you guys are here to watch. If you like this kind of video, we like to break it down and show you exactly how we're fishing. And um, Hay Skipper is all about 
teaching you guys how to fish and making it easy for you to learn how to fish. Uh, we, we also write a lot of books. I have a lot of different information uh, that I put online on our website, hayskipperfishing.com, whether it be how to tie knots, what lures to use, what bait to use, how to cut up your bait, all sorts of info. Woo! But if you want to learn more, we specialize in teaching. So check out our website, hayskipperfishing.com. Also, remember, anytime you're using plastic stuff or any kind of trash, clean it up. I don't want to see it on these beaches. It's too pretty to, to ruin like that. So be sure to keep your trash in your backpack. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.